The simplest mechanism for nucleophilic acyl substitution is a two-step sequence that generally takes place under basic conditions with a good nucleophile, like methoxide, and a carbonyl that has a good leaving group, like chloride. This two-step sequence is commonly referred to as addition elimination through a tetrahedral intermediate. The mechanism begins with the AD sub N step in which the nucleophile attacks the carbonyl carbon, the polarized pi bond of the carbonyl group. The AD sub N step generates an oxyanion intermediate, and the carbonyl carbon is transformed into this sp3 carbon, the tetrahedral geometry, which is why we call it the tetrahedral intermediate. This turns around and it gets ready to do a beta elimination, but at this point there's a choice to make. One could imagine that there are two leaving groups on this position, and if, for example, the leaving group is the methoxide, one would return to the starting point. And that's why these arrows are there. It shows the potential, at least, for this step to be reversible. However, to go forward, to have forward progress, a productive pathway, is going to involve the loss of the chloride so that net substitution takes place. The chloride is lost as the chloride anion, and we've generated now the new substitution product with the carbonyl to oxygen bond. The key step is which of these two groups is going to be lost, and that's a decision that we can make by examining leaving group ability. The chart at the bottom arranges leaving groups from the best to the worst, and you can remember that leaving group ability is related to the strength of the base. The weaker the base, in other words, the stronger the conjugate acid, the better is the leaving group. And so if we have a tetrahedral intermediate that has two of these groups attached to it, then whichever one lies to the left is going to be the leaving group that's going to be lost. The order of leaving groups in this chart for the different carbonyl derivatives shown here thus determines which direction the substitution reactions will lie. Let's take a look at a couple of limiting cases. The first is an example where the incoming nucleophile is a strong base and the leaving group is a weaker base. It'd be analogous to the reaction that we just worked where the incoming nucleophile was methoxide, a strong base, and the leaving group was a weak base like chloride. In that case, you can see that the overall reaction is thermodynamically favored and at the point of the tetrahedral intermediate, the favored pathway is that to eliminate the weaker base, the chloride, because it's going to carry that developing negative charge at that transition state better than if we had followed the reverse pathway, which would be putting the negative charge on that oxygen, which is not able to stabilize the negative charge as well as the chloride. If the opposite were true, if the leaving group was a stronger base than the nucleophile, the reaction would be thermodynamically unfavored. So for example, if we had as the leaving group the methoxide, it would never be able to be replaced by the chloride. It's an uphill battle, and the reason is, is once we got to that tetrahedral intermediate, the favored direction would be to put that negative charge back on the chloride and return to the starting point. Let's work one more example where the two species that are involved have very similar leaving group abilities, and we'll find that there can be other factors that help drive these reactions forward. This reaction is base-catalyzed ester hydrolysis. It's a substitution reaction at the carbonyl carbon where we're replacing the methoxide group with the incoming hydroxide nucleophile. Now, if you look at the incoming hydroxide nucleophile and you compare it to the leaving group, the methoxide anion, these two have very similar leaving group abilities because the pKa's of their conjugate acids are almost identical. We can understand what drives this reaction ultimately to the hydrolysis product, the carboxylate anion, when we take a look at the mechanism. The mechanism is this two-step sequence, addition elimination, through a tetrahedral intermediate, and so we begin with the AD sub N step to the polarized pi bond of the carbonyl. That creates this tetrahedral intermediate, which undergoes a beta elimination, kicking out the methoxide anion to generate the carboxylic acid and that leaving group, the methoxide. This is a very strong base. This is quite a strong acid, and so the favorable direction for this equilibrium is to do the deprotonation to generate 
this carboxylate. If you notice the equilibrium arrow here, it favors the left-hand side, the carboxylate anion and methanol, and that's what drives this reaction forward. Addition, elimination through a tetrahedral intermediate is the simplest mechanism by which acyl substitution can take place. In the next webcast, we'll look at how this mechanism gets modified slightly when we're operating under neutral conditions.